Hey, Delo Falava. This is Lantel with Dr. John Peterson, and I'm with TE2 Edge Sports Cards. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd do a little video here. Um, it's Friday night, end of the quote unquote work week, although um, I guess some folks work on the weekends. So if you're working on the weekends, much respect and one love. I'll probably work a little bit this weekend. Got a couple projects and things that I need to get. Need to get wrapped up um, and prepared for next week. So, um, but overall, uh, you know, just definitely keep watching the videos, keep subscribing, keep sharing, keep commenting for sure, and uh, put some likes in there too if you get time. Um, really, really, really enjoying doing the videos, and uh, really even more so than doing the actual videos is interacting with folks in the comments. Um, so thank you so much. I'm just grateful. And we're actually closing in on, I think, almost 2,000 subscribers here, which uh, is beyond my wildest dreams when I started this channel. So yeah, definitely, if you're watching, hit the subscribe button. I'd super appreciate it. And yeah, and we'll go from there. Um, yeah, so what's going on today? Not a ton. I thought I would talk a little bit about the 1986 McDonald's football all-stars that are cards that i've got uh, all-stars um <clears throat> i've done some videos excuse me again sorry about that i've done some videos in the past this is going way back to the winter um maybe even the fall uh of uh no not quite the fall probably december of 2021 i did some videos check them out if you get a chance where I'm talking about these 1986 McDonald's All-Star cards. Some of you have probably heard about these. I don't know, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. I think they're somewhat of a rarity, maybe a bit of an oddity. I ended up getting into, I don't know, three or four Tupperware bins full of these cards back in December. Um, I found them on an auction, a live auction, that I actually uh, bid online and won but then physically went and picked up the cards. I had actually visited the auction house the week before the auction started just to get a sense of what I was dealing with. And I bid on a few other things, but this was the main stuff that I got. Excuse me. So I ended up getting a lot of these cards. Like, I mean, a lot, a lot. Thousands. And like I said, I paid... Probably, no, probably not. I know I paid more than what I had anticipated I was going to spend. And not just a little bit more, quite a bit more. So I've been sitting here on these cards trying to figure out what am I going to do with these cards? It would be great to be able to get some of the money back. Um, it'd be great to get all the money back and then some. Um, although, you know, I'm keeping my expectations realistic here um these cards were printed back in the summer of 1986 and there were three different colors of cards uh the first batch of cards that were printed and sold over one week in the summer of 86 were the blue tabbed cards so this is a an example of a 1986 mcdonald's dan marino all stars in blue in a seven all right, so what a lot of people did is they scratched off the bottom, they ripped off the tab, and they turned it in to get themselves a free small french fry or something. Okay, so that was the, the first batch that was, that was created and printed. But they were only printed and sold and given out, not sold, but given out with, with like food, McDonald's food, for one week. Okay, and then also, too, I found out that the all-star cards were only available in the places that didn't have uh the, they were only available in like rural and suburban areas where there wasn't a metropolitan area that had a team so for example chicago uh if you lived in the chicago metropolitan area you got the chicago bears team but if you lived in like say champaign you didn't get the Chicago Bears team, you got the All-Stars. Or if you lived in, you know, some other place, you only got the 
All-Stars and not the team. Like if you lived in Green Bay, you got the Packers. But if you lived in Menominee, Wisconsin, on the other side of the state where I grew up, you got the All-Stars. And I actually remembered these cards from back in the day. I was 11 years old when these came out. No, 12. 12 years old. So I do remember them. I didn't have any saved um, from then. But um, so there's a couple different variables that go along with these cards. One, the color of the tab. So the second group that was printed um, actually wasn't green. It was... It was black okay so the black tabs were printed second uh, the third tabs that were printed I believe were the gold or orange and then the last ones that were printed were the green okay so there were 30 cards in the set 30 in green 30 in black 30 in blue 30 in gold slash orange and they were mostly players that were Pro Bowl players, but not all of them. Not all were Pro Bowl players the prior year. Um, the top three or four cards from the set are Walter Payton, Dan Marino, Let's see if I can find it here, Joe Montana, and then I would say Lawrence Taylor are the, three, are the four biggest cards in the set. Um, but there's other cards like Phil Sims and Joe Morris and Jim McMahon and Mark Gastineau and Joe Jacoby and all, just a whole host of different players. The cards are numbered according to the player's number on their jersey. So card number 34 in the set is Walter Payton because he wore number 34. So um, over the four weeks... Each color was made available to the public, and then they stopped making them available. Well, I think what happened in my case is that whoever had these cards had owned a McDonald's, or maybe owned multiple McDonald's, and they just saved the cards in these tubs over, you know, what, 35 odd years or whatever. So I ended up with all these cards. I sorted them all. I got them all sorted according to player. Um, I did not do it according to set. Um, and then I did it according to color. So I've got every player in blue, every player in black, every player in gold orange, and every player in green. Um, I think green was last. I'm pretty sure green was last. It's either green or black. <clears throat> Excuse me again. So one of the things that I'm curious about from the collective wisdom of the group here that's watching this video is what do you think I should do with these cards? Like, how do you think I should approach it from a project-based perspective? Um, it's really hard to get 10s. I'm going to tell you that right now. Back in the day, PSA used to be pretty lenient with what was considered a 10. I've seen some tens that don't look as good as this, and this got a nine. They're really, really hard to find these cards perfectly centered, especially the Walter Paytons. So to get a nine in this card is, is pretty amazing. I mean, you have to have a lot of these cards in order to get nines and tens. So I got a bunch graded. I paid a fair amount to get them graded. I think I paid maybe $30 a slab to have these graded, and you can see I've got quite a few here and I've got even some more in a box um, one of the things I'm thinking of doing is um, is uh, checking out the PSA set registry to see if anyone's trying to complete these in a set um, if there there are people trying to do that I could reach out to them and possibly sell them some of the cards that they're missing another idea that I had was trying to build a complete set which I don't think anyone's ever done Last time I checked the PSA registry, no one had a full set. So I could try and build a full set and then sell it. Either sell it on eBay or auction it off at PWCC, Golden, Heritage, probably PWCC. Because I don't think, excuse me again, I don't think, honestly, I mean, I think these cards are super rare. I'm going to be like in a nine and in a 10, they're rare. They're very rare. They're way more rare than, say, 86 tops football in nines and tens. 
the pop count on these cards is like virtually nothing. Um, so I don't know. What do you think I should do? Um, I'd love to hear your comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I mean, I've got a long way to go to make my money back on these, but I also have thousands of them. And so the chances that I have lots of nines and tens are pretty good. Um, even though I didn't do super great on getting any tens, I didn't get any tens the first submission. Um, I didn't use got baseball cards as my screener and my subber. So I'm going to sub, I subbed, a, a, I think what I sent in, I sent in about 175 of these uh, raw. They were a combination of Marinos, Paytons, and Montanas, and Lawrence Taylors. And 17 came back from the screening from Got Baseball Cards as being potentially nines or higher. So that's a 17 divided by 175 is the percentage. So, you know, whatever that percentage, that's about how many nines and tens I think I've got in all the thousands of cards. So anyway, leave a comment, leave a like, let me know what you think I should do. I'd love to hear your advice and um, for sure take it into consideration and see how I can maybe flip some of these 1986 McDonald's All-Stars football cards. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you. Peace out. One love.